Today we're going to show you how to install Hilltopper's Horizon Conversion Kit. Each Horizon Kit comes with the following. A wheel and hub motor, including a tire and tube. A 36 volt 11.4 amp hour battery with charger and keys. A battery dock, along with the necessary mounting hardware. A variable speed throttle with the cable. The pedal assist setup, which consists of a sensor and a two-piece magnet wheel the torque arm to add strength to your front fork, and the instruction manual. The installation is pretty easy and requires only a handful of household tools. They are an Allen key set, 8mm screwdriver or Phillips head for the torque arm, a 19mm box or adjustable wrench for the motor axle, 10mm or adjustable wrench for the torque arm, and scissors for unboxing and zip ties. Our battery dock is best installed where your current water bottle cage is mounted. However, if you don't have enough room for the battery, feel free to install the dock in a front basket, rear rack, or another convenient place on your frame as long as it's secure. Before mounting the dock, attach the battery dock to the battery connection point. The larger hole should be just hanging over the plastic rail. Screw the metal plate into the bottom of the battery connection point using the provided screw. There are two smaller holes along the rail that need to be reinforced with the provided screws and nuts. Hold the nut on the back of the rail with your finger in order to tighten the screw. Using the provided hardware, place the dock on the frame, lining up with the water bottle mounting holes. Make sure the base of the battery dock points down towards the pedals. Once the dock is secure, slide the battery onto the dock. To remove the battery, insert the key and turn counterclockwise. Hold the key in this position and pull the battery up and out. Keep your keys in a safe place as they are difficult to replace. Underneath the rubber cover on the battery, you will find the red power button, the charging port, and a USB port for on-the-go device charging. To charge your battery, plug the charger into the wall and wait for the light to turn green. Plug the barrel connector into the charging port on the battery. The light on the charger will turn red and stay red while charging. The charger will turn green once again when the battery is fully charged. Charging time will vary depending on how depleted the battery is. The variable speed throttle is a versatile thumb throttle that lets you control the amount of power fed to the motor. It can be set up in whatever configuration you'd like it to be in. However, we recommend installing it on the left side between the handle grips and the brake shift levers. Before you attempt to take the handlebar grips off, make sure to check that there are no locking bolts on the end of the handlebar. If resistance is too great, you can heat the grip with a hairdryer or spritz a bit of rubbing alcohol underneath the grips. If you wish to install your variable speed throttle on the inside, closer to the stem, of the brake shift lever, you will need to loosen the brake shifter. There is usually only one bolt on the back or underside of the handlebar. The cables do not need to be disengaged to remove brake or shifter levers. Once you are ready, slide the variable speed throttle onto the handlebars. Partially tighten the bolt on the underside clamp with a 3mm hex Allen wrench. Don't tighten it all the way just yet. Slide the grips back onto the handlebars. Make any adjustments as needed to each part. After everything is in place and where you want it, tighten each part to avoid any movement once the bike is in use. Test the throttle to make sure it doesn't move when pushing the lever. To install your new Hilltopper Horizon hub motor wheel, 
Start by turning the bike upside down with the handlebars and seat resting on the ground. Take note of what side the drive chain is on your bike. This is the best way to orient yourself when installing the hub motor. For bikes with a disc brake, remove the front wheel and be sure to place a spacer in between the brake pads to ensure they don't lock shut. On your new hub motor wheel, there is a plastic spacer held in place where the disc brake is installed. Remove this plastic spacer first, then remove the disc brake rotor from your original wheel. Remember to handle the rotor by only using the inside edges as you do not want to contaminate the braking surface. Over on your new wheel, make sure the rotor is installed to match the same rotation as the bike wheel. Most rotors have an arrow to show which direction they should rotate in order to match the wheel. Otherwise you can install the rotor so that the side with any riding is facing outwards. Place the rotor on the wheel and insert the screws in a star pattern as if you were changing a car tire. Finger tighten the screws as you go along. Then finish tightening the screws with an Allen key in the same star pattern. If you'd like to swap the tire out on your wheel, now is the time to do so. Please check out our changing out the tire on your hub motor wheel video to see how that is done. Set your hub motor wheel in place with the motor cable on the non-drive side. Ensure that the bike fork is seated securely on the axle with the tab washers snugly in the fork dropouts. The tab washer should be facing inwards toward the motor and down towards the motor cable. Again, make sure the motor cable is on the correct side. In this case, it's on the non-drive chain side. The cable should be below the axle and tab washer when the bike is standing with the wheels on the ground. Then, take a second to make sure the wheel can turn properly without rubbing or grinding on the fork or brakes. Adjust the spacing as needed with the provided washers. Please note that your brakes may need adjustments for the wheel to spin freely. Once everything has been spaced, slide the thick washer over the axle and screw the axle nut onto the end of the axle. Finger tighten the nut. Flip the bike onto its wheels and push down on the handlebars to ensure the wheel is fully seated in place. Since our conversion kits are front wheel drive, that added torque can put strain on the front fork of some bikes, which makes our torque arm a simple way to reinforce your front fork and ensure that the added torque is properly accounted for. To assemble the torque arm, match the circle found at the tip of the long arm with the same sized circle on the bean-shaped piece. Place the provided screw through both holes and place the washer and bolt on the other end. It should look like this. Slide the assembled torque arm onto either side of the wheel facing forward. We recommend the non-motor cable side. Slide the thick washer over the axle, screw the axle nut onto the end of the axle, and finger tighten. Angle the arm so that it is flush with the leg of your front fork. Thread the end of the hose clamp band through the narrow slot on the arm, around the right fork leg, and back into itself. When you have the band snug, tighten the little screw to lock the band into place. Then use a wrench to fully tighten the nuts. Reset your brakes if needed, and make sure the hub motor wheel spins freely. The pedal assist system is designed as another way to give you a boost along with the regular throttle. It will recognize when you are pedaling and engage the motor. This is a completely optional feature and can be left off of your kit if you'd like. Before you begin installing the pedal assist system, take a moment to make sure the magnet wheel will fit your bike. Generally, you only need about six millimeters of space on the drive side of your crankshaft between your innermost chain ring and frame to install the magnet wheel. As you can see, the magnet ring will not fit on this bike, so we'll show you how to do it on a bike that can take it. To install the magnet wheel, you do not have to remove the crank arm as the magnet wheel is made up of two pieces. Simply remove the aluminum ring around the magnet wheel to split it up for easy installation. Each piece has a ridge side and a labeled working surface side. Wrap the two pieces around the crankshaft with the working surface facing the seat post. Replace the aluminum ring to secure the pieces in place. On the drive or chain side of your bike, place the pedal assist sensor at the bottom of the seat tube right at the cranks and pedals. 
make sure that the red LED light is pointed up and the target logo is pointed down. Align the target with the magnet wheel magnets and use the provided zip ties to attach the pedal assist system securely to the seat tube. The Horizon Dock has three cable connections used to connect the throttle, pedal assist sensor, and hub motor. Be sure to pay attention to the arrows on each plug and align the arrows before inserting plugs together. Poor installation may result in damage pins and bad connectivity. This type of damage is not covered under your warranty. Giving your front wheel the flexibility to move around is an important consideration. Installing the cables too tight between the handlebar and the battery dock may decrease the range of motion on your front tire and severely limit your steering capabilities, potentially causing accidents. We suggest aligning the motor and throttle cables along the brake and gear shifter cables as a guide to give the cables enough slack. This should protect your cables from being pulled too tight or damaged in the event of an accident or the front wheel getting twisted around. Once the cables have been secured, move the handlebars back and forth within their full intended range of motion to make sure your steering isn't restricted. Be sure to secure any excess cabling to the bike frame. Lift the motor wheel off the ground and engage the throttle to test your system. Listen for any rubbing or other noises that may be impeding your wheel. And that's it! You've successfully installed your Hilltopper kit. We hope you enjoy conquering those hills and zooming around town.